दक्षिणास्य समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंता स्मरिया गुरु परंपरा श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत् शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम परिज्ञाश्रम श्री गुरुशंकर परिज्ञाश्रम शंकर सद्गुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनो भुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विषा वह ओं शाति 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 We are at present looking into some of the beautiful Advaita Parastotras composed by Bhagwan Shankar Acharya, and we are going in a certain order so that we start from the beginning, from Purushartha Nishchaya, and then ultimately go to that highest level of understanding where I abide in my Atma Swarupa. so we have chosen like we you know swami ji has chosen these you know stotras in such a way that we are going step by step step by step towards the final the ultimate understanding of aham brahmasmi and the first one we took the first stotra we took was moha mudgaraha or bhajagovindam which talked about various purusharthas the human pursuits available to a human being to a human jeeva and what is the advantage or what is the superiority of moksha purushartha over dharma artha kama purusharthas the deficiencies the doshas of dharma artha kama purusharthas were mentioned in detail they were talked about actually they were described in detail and then ultimately there bhajagovindam tells a jeeva because of all these deficiencies in the other three purusharthas may you choose moksha as your purushartha so that you are once and for all out of this bondage of samsara so that was what is called as the purushartha nischaya that is a mumukshu or a jeeva decides that i am going to be a tivra mumukshu pursue this particular path and whatever is necessary to pursue the moksha purushartha i am going to take up all those sadhanas now what are those sadhanas which are necessary for me to pursue moksha purushartha staying in my own varna and ashrama i can't get out of my ashrama dharma at least at that time it was so to some extent now also it is true in our own way in a certain way now also we are bound to certain system at a particular age or a particular station in our lives and then continuing to do our duties continuing to fulfill our responsibilities living in those stages of life the so called the ashramas which were very very clear cut in those days they may not be so clear cut and exclusive these days but a kind of a mix up may be there but still the sadhanas that are talked about for the natural spiritual growth of a person in all the ashramas and all the stages of one's life ashrama means stage of one's life in the different stages of one's life from brahmacharya ashrama to grahastha ashrama to vanaprastha ashrama to sanyasa ashrama was clear, very clearly given in the sopana panchakam or sadhana panchakam sopana panchakam means step by step you know this talked about 
भगवान शंकराचार्य टॉक्ड अबाउट वॉट इज दैट आई शुड डू टू परस्यू मोक्ष पुरुषार्थ येस आई हैव डिसाइडेड अपॉन मोक्ष पुरुषार्थ आई हैव आई एम अ तीव्र मुमोक्षु एंड देन वॉट शुड आई डू फॉर दैट हाउ इज इट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू वॉट काइंड ऑफ साधनास वॉट काइंड ऑफ डिसिप्लिन आम आई सपोज टू फॉलो डूइंग वॉट एम आई डूइंग बींग वेर एवर आई एम बट दो साधनास विच हेल्प मी इन परस्यूइंग माय मोक्ष पुरुषार्थ एंड अल्टीमेटली रीचिंग द गोल दैट वॉज वॉट वॉज टॉक्ड अबाउट इन द साधन पंचक देन वी सॉ इन द लास्ट सेशन वी सॉ प्रातः स्मरा प्रातः स्मरणम और ब्रह्मण प्रातः स्मरणम वेर द टीचिंग्स ऑफ द उपनिषद्स इज दैट यू आर दिस ब्रह्मन तत्व असी दैट ब्रह्मन which is in and through the whole universe that brahman or consciousness which is behind every body mind sense complex every jiva that brahman or consciousness which is the very support of the millions of names and forms that we see in the universe that atma that brahman you are this is the teaching of the upanishad and that teaching was talked about for the sake of vidhi dhyasana in three verses what were called as the brahmana pratha smaranam now the upanishads also have another way of putting the same thing as to who i am what is my reality what is my real nature what is my swarupam the upanishads have another way of putting it across now when you when we ask ourselves who am i when i say i the i includes the body the mind the sense complexes and the ahankara we have already seen this in all the previous texts that we have taken so when i say i the i is a mixture of the anatma body mind sense complex and the consciousness or the chaitanya swarupa atma so when i say i this i is a very very loose vague mixture of the body mind sense complex and i the consciousness and the problem with me right now is when a mumukshu starts the problem is that i am so you know tightly identified with this body mind sense complex that out of these two out of this mixture of atma anatma atma i the consciousness atma which was talked about in pratha smaranam as to what got kind of an atma chaitanya aham asmi that i am right now i do not know that because of the closeness or the proximity of the body mind sense complex anatma and the chaitanya atma the chaitanyam or atma there is always a mistaken notion notion that i am the body mind sense complex i am the body i am the mind i am the sense complex iti there is always this kind of an identification with the body mind sense complex and i am this atma swarupa i am this chaitanya atma is something which i am not able to understand though we have seen it in pratha smaranam the ultimate teaching of the upanishads is that you are that atma that is what we have seen it pratha smarami hrudi samspurat atma tattvam sat chit sukham param aham sagatim turiyam yat swapna jagara we saw that i don't want to repeat that but then how do we come to that how do we come to abiding in this atma swarupa what do we do about it what we have to do is right now there is a mix up there is a mix up between the anatma body mind sense complex and the atma consciousness swarupa atma chaitanya swarupa atma and what the upanishads have to do is they have to make me see and sort out the mix up the mix up has to be sorted out and the wrong notion has to be corrected 
So whatever I have mistaken myself for out of this anatma body mind sense complex and the Sakshi Chaitanya Atma combination, what is that real me? Am I this body mind sense complex or am I this Chaitanya Swarupa Atma, the consciousness behind this body mind sense complex? There is this mix up. So who am I? How to sort out this mix up? And this is what our scriptures tell us by using various types of teaching modules. And one of the most important teaching modules that the Upanishads talk about is what is called as the Druk Drishya Viveka. What is the meaning of Druk Drishya Viveka? That means our Upanishads say that whatever you see, whatever you experience is an object of your experience. The seer is not the seeing. For example, I am seeing this book here. This is the seen object. I am the seer. I am not the book. Because the book is an object of my perception. Who am I? I am the perceiver, the subject consciousness or the Chaitanyam which perceives this book, understands this as a book and does whatever Vyavahara has to be done with that particular book. Therefore, the most important teaching, one of the important methodologies of teaching, why I am saying all this is, we have already seen Pancha Posha Viveka in Viveka Chudamani. We have already seen Sharira Traya Viveka in Viveka Chudamani also in Bhagavad Gita also. Correct? So here, whatever we are going to see now in the next two stotras that we are going to take, one is this, Atma Shatkam that we are going to talk about. Then after that, another stotra we are going to take where Bhagavan Shankaracharya is giving us the teachings of the Upanishad using this teaching methodology called as the Drit Drishya Viveka. So what is the Drit Drishya Viveka? There are three things that are there in Drit Drishya Viveka. Three things are the most important summarizing Factors or three important factors are talked about in this Drishya Viveka. What is the meaning of that? What it says is the Drishyam or the perceived object or the object of experience or the object of perception is mistaken or mixed up with the very subject who perceives. Drik is the seer or the perceiver or the experiencer. So what we have to understand? The seer consciousness, the experience consciousness, or the, you know, the, what you call as the, yeah, experience consciousness, perceiver consciousness, seer consciousness. Why am I using this word consciousness? Because there is a conscious principle. There is a conscious entity behind all the experiences behind all the perceptions therefore this drik means the perce perceiving or the perceiver consciousness that chaitanya or that you know consciousness which perceives whatever is there understands whatever is there what is that that is called as the drik and whatever is experienced Whatever is seen is an object of my perception, which is called as the Drishyam. And Vedanta says, a Druk can never be the Drishyam. A Drishyam can never be the Druk. And ultimately, the Chaitanya Atma, which is the ultimate Druk, is always a Druk. It's always the perceiver consciousness. It can never be the object of perception. That is the first principle of teaching of Dhritrisha Viveka. Secondly, it says that if there are certain attributes that are experienced by me, for example, now I see this, I see this as blue, blue book, blue. 
I am perceiving a blue color here. It is an attribute. It's an attribute. I am seeing this green colored sari. It is an attribute. So any attribute that I experience in the form of color or form or whatever it is, various forms of attributes that I experience, they don't belong to me, the druk. They belong to the drishyam. So all the attributes belong to the drishyam and not to the druk. That means the object has all the attributes. The subject, the perceiver is not affected in any way by these attributes. So you can say the object and the subject, the perceived object and the perceiver, the scene and the seer. So who am I? I'm the seer. And what is whatever I see, whatever I experience is the object of my experience. And whatever attributes are there that I'm perceiving, they don't belong to me, the seer. The attributes belong to the object that is perceived. So the blueness belongs to the book here. The blueness does not belong to me. That is the second teaching of Trikrishya Viveka. Why I'm telling you is the next two stotras that we are going to talk about, including today's Atma Shatkam, maybe we may take two sessions for it. Now, this Atma Shatkam very much talks about this particular aspect of Vedantic teaching called as the Trikrishya Viveka. So first is, the drik is never the drishyam. I have a book, I'm not the book. I'm seeing a laptop in front of me, I'm not the laptop. So my Vedanta guru used to say, if still you don't understand, I'm seeing a donkey, but I'm not a donkey. I have a donkey, but I'm not the donkey. This will be very clear. This By this you will understand, he would say. So whatever I see, whatever I experience is an object of my experience. I am not that first teaching. Any attributes like color, form or whatever attribute, small, big, you know, heavy and thin and tall and whatever it is, whatever I see, those attributes belong to the object of perception and not to me, the subject. Second, they are actually very easy to understand if you understand. That's why I'm saying it again and again. Third thing is, any object that I see is made up of matter principle and it is bhautikam, pancha bhautikam, made up of the five elements. So all the objects that I see are elementals, made up of the five elements. What about the druk, the experiencer consciousness? It is not an elemental. It is not matter principle. What is it then? It is the very subject consciousness. These are the three things that are told in Drit Drishya Viveka. These three are the principles on which this Drit Drishya Viveka is based. There are other things also. There are many other corollaries to this. We can add something. One is, you know, that matter principle is constantly changing. The subject principle consciousness is not changing. And vikari, nirvikari, anekam, ekam, mithya, satyam. We can add all these things. There are many things which we can add to say the difference between the two. And ultimately it says that the drishyam is anatma and the drik is atma. That which is an object of my perception, that which is made up of the five elements, that which has got attributes which constantly change, that is called as anatma. And I, the consciousness, which is the druk or the perceiver consciousness, which is ever the perceiver consciousness, which does not have any attributes, which is not the effect of the five elements. This is what is called as the druk, which is atma. So out of this anatma and atma, who am I? So the, the work that we are going to see, 
it's going to say that i am the atma tattvam i am not the anatma that i am seeing or perceiving so what does anatma include now the entire jagat is anatma my body mind sense complex also is anatma so in atma shatkam which we are going to see which is also called as the nirvana shatkam this text adi shankaracharya bhagwan is trying to tell me who i am this is called as the tvam padartha vichara which we saw in bhagavad gita in the first six verses as to who am i am i the anatma body mind sense complex or am i the chaitanya atma am i that consciousness which is the perceiver of the body mind sense complex why is this body anatma that is going to be talked about and who am i in this mixture of the anatma body mind sense complex and the consciousness varupa atma in consciousness i and the body mind sense complex anatma i who is the real i so here in atma shatkam bhagwan shankar acharya says that perceiver consciousness that drak swarupa that chaitanya atma you are which is the meaning of the tvam in tvatvamasi equation then what is this anatma that you are seeing it is an object of my perception i the perceiver cannot be the perceived i incidentally have a body but i am not the body i am incidentally associated with this body but i am not the body i am the asanga atma swarupa that is what is going to be talked about in this atma shatkam or nirvana shatkam shatkam means a group of six there are six verses in this it's a small one again a small stotra but very very loaded and therefore actually i was thinking maybe i could do it in one session but i had to give the introduction of what is the teaching behind this atma tattvam behind the atma shatkam so therefore now we'll go to this nirvana shatkam or atma shatkam i will chant the first verse and i'll tell you what is the you know pattern that follows here okay so मनो बुद्ध्यहंकारचिनाह न च्रोत्रजीवे न चाणने न च्योम भूमिर्न तेजो न वायु चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम इन ऑल द सिक्स वर्सेस द लास्ट लाइन इज द से चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम दिस इज द लास्ट लाइन विच इज कॉमन इन ऑल द सिक्स वर्सेस एंड ऑल द सिक्स वर्सेस फॉलो ए सर्टन पैटर्न वॉट इज दैट पैटर्न द फर्स्ट थ्री लाइन्स भगवान शंकराचार्य डिस्क्राइब्स वॉट आई एम नॉट वॉट आई एम नॉट that is described in the first three lines they are called as the nisheda rupa vakya nisheda rupa that means what i am not i am not nisheda rupena negating the first three lines are negating what i am not and the fourth line is asserting what i am so the first three lines are negating that idea that i have that i am the body this is my current understanding i am the body i am the mind i am the sense complexes this is my current current understanding so you are not the anatma to say that the first three lines talk about you are not that you are not that you are not that okay here he is talking from aham that is what i am not this is the nididhyasana that i have to do so i am not this i am not this 
I am not this. I am not this anatma. I am not this anatma. I am not this anatma. Then what am I? I am the very perceiver atma. I am the atma which is ultimately the perceiver consciousness, the experiencer consciousness. Or that is how the common pattern of all these verses up till the verse 5 actually is there. Then in the verse 6, we find it's all the positive, you know, Swarupa Lakshanas of I, the Atma. So here, Bhagwan Shankaracharya say, does not say you are not, says aham, aham. That means I have to understand it in the same way. I'm not the Anatma body mind sense complex. I am the perceiver Atma. How he gives this, how he gives this understanding in the Shatkam, a group of six verses. I have already read what it means here, what, what the first verse is. I have already read that, chanted that. So now let us see what is the meaning of these verses. The Nisheda Vakyas will see, take first what I am not. The fourth line is called as the Vidhi Rupa Vakya. That means the first three lines tell me what I am not. Nisheda Rupena. The fourth line tells me what I am. Vidhi Rupena. This is how I have to take it. And the Shruti tells me, okay, you are not that, you are not that, you are the Atma. When I understand it, how should I understand it? I am not this, I am not this, I am not this, but I am this Atma. Whatever I am seeing, whatever I am experiencing is an object of my perception. Therefore, I am not that. Then who am I? I am that very Chaitanya Swarupa Atma who is behind all the perceptions. That is what I am supposed to understand. Now here, Bhagwan Shankaracharya starts with Sukshma Sharira. We have to remember a lot of Tattva Bodha here. What does Tattva Bodha say about the Atma? Sthula Sukshma Karana Sharira Vyatiriktaha. Atma kaha. What is Atma? What is this Atma? Sthula Sukshma Karana Sharira Vyatiriktaha. This Atma is something other than the Sthula Sharira, Sukshma Sharira and Karana Sharira. Panchakosha Vilakshanaha. This Atma is something which is different from the five Koshas. Panchakosha Vilakshanaha. Then avasthatraya sakshi. It is not either the jagrat jiva or the swapna jiva or the sushupta jiva, but it is the sakshi chaitanya or the very witness consciousness of all the three avasthas. Then what is that atma? It says sat chit ananda swarupaha. Okay, so the first three are what? Nisheda. Chattatva Bodha says that. Sthula Sukshma Karana Sharira Vyati Riktaha. It is not the Sthula Sukshma Karana Sharira. Panchakosha Vilakshanaha. It is not the Panchakosha, something different from that. Avasthatraya Sakshi. It is not the Jagrita Avastha, Swapna Avastha, Sushupti Avastha Jiva. But it is the very consciousness or the Shakshi which is aware of the three avastas. Then what is its Swarupam? Sat, Chit, Ananda, Swarupaha, San. So that is the nature of you, the Atma. That is how Atma is described in Tattva Bodha. And the same pattern is described here. And now in the first verse, Bhagwan Shankaracharya is Starting from Sukshma Sharira. Why is he starting from Sukshma Sharira? Probably by the time we come to Nirvana Shatkam, Bhagwan Shankaracharya must be feeling that we have studied enough of Vedanta. We have done enough of Shravanam, Mananam, Mananam and Vidyasanam. And therefore, I am not the Stula Sharira. Iti. It is quite obvious to these Mumukshus. That must be the hope of Adi Shankaracharya, but that is a very difficult thing to understand because our identification with the Sthula Sharira is so strong, so strong. Forget about Sukshma Sharira. 
this body the identification with this body is so strong and for millions and millions of janmas this identification has come about and therefore it is not that easy to just immediately understand i am not the body to even go beyond this physical body or sthula sharir or annamaya kosha it might require a lot of nididhyasana it requires a lot of nididhyasana so anyway here adi shankaracharya bhagavan starts with sukshma sharira sthula shariram he just mentions in the later in the second verse we have a small mention of it where we can say he probably indicates the sthula sharira so what does he say here now he says manaha buddhi ahankara chittani naham i am not the antakarana now we have to understand you have to go back to tattva bodha what are the components of sukshma sharira the sukshma sharira components are 19 components sometimes it is taken as 17 also what are they pancha gnana indriyas the organs of perception five pancha karma indriyas the five organs of action pancha pranas that is the five pranas the five physiological pranas and then the antakarana the inner instrument or antakarana which is functionally divided into manaha buddhihi ahankara and chitta depending upon what function the antakarana is doing manaha means what when the antakarana is doubting vacillating sankalpa vikalpa when there are emotions like raga dvesha these kind of emotions i am experiencing that functional aspect of the antakarana is called as the mind nischayatmika buddhi hi when i take a certain decisive decision that is the buddhi that is the function of the buddhi ahankara ha i am the doer i am an individual that individuality that i feel and i feel i am the karta i am the doer this particular i am an individual doer this is called as the ahankara chitta ha is the memory recollection or memory actually i shouldn't be talking about all these things because these are all talked about in tattva bodha so i shouldn't be talking about it but i am just reminding so who am i i am not the antakarana manaha buddhi ahankara chitta rupi antakarana na aham chittani na aham then na cha shrotra jivve na cha ghrana netre i am not the five organs of perception or gnana indriyas shrotra indriya i am not jihve na cha grana netre okay i am not the five organs of perception in the form of the eyes or the ears or the nose the skin and also the tasting tongue therefore i am not the five organs of perception also a part of sukshma sharira correct so five gnana indriyas i am not a part of that then he says न च व्योम भूमिर्न तेजो न वायु एंड ऑल दीज दीज अंतकरण द ज्ञानेन्द्रिया दे आर ऑल फॉर्म्ड फ्रॉम वॉट फ्रॉम द फाइव एलिमेंट्स दैट इज वॉट आर द फाइव एलिमेंट्स आकाश वायु अग्नि आप पृथ्वी दीज फाइव एलिमेंट्स आर अल्टिमेटली forming the entire sukshma sharira a panchi krita pancha maha bhutani a panchi krita that means what they are not grossified ungrossified five elements in various combinations give rise to the sukshma sharira so what is it which aspect of which element gives rise to what you have to go back to tattva bodha that i cannot talk about it here you have to go back to tattva bodha so he says na cha vyoma bhumi hi na tejo na vayu 
and not the five elements which are responsible for the creation of this sukshma sharira so i am not the antakarana i am not the jnanendriyas i am not the five elements which have gone into the formation or the creation of this sukshma sharira now let us put apply the principles of tritrishya viveka as i have told you as i have told you earlier let us begin so what is it now the first principle whatever is experienced by me is an object of my experience i am not that therefore now manaha i experience i am aware of my mind i am aware of the emotions of my mind i am aware of the doubts of my mind correct buddhi hi i am aware when i take decisions when the nischaya has taken place i am aware of that ahankara i am aware of my individuality chitta i am aware of all the recollecting process that is going on in the antakarana so i am the observer of my antakarana also the inner instrument also second thing what did i say all the attributes that i perceive belong to the object of my perception i am aware when my sense organs are not working properly andatvam mandatvam patutvam you saw that in vivek chudamani when i have clear sense organs of perception i there is something which knows i say i can see clearly i say i cannot see clearly i say i am blind actually i am not blind i am seeing that the eyes are not able to see clearly or the eyes are blind or the eyes are seeing clearly therefore all the attributes and properties of the sense organs and the mind also i am able to witness when i am sad i am witnessing the sadness when i have desire i am witnessing the desire when i have anger when i am witnessing the desire that means what all these attributes or properties belong to the object of my perception which is the antakarana and also the objects of perception you understand what i am saying second principle the third principle is what pancha bhautika these are all bhautika these are made up or these are formed by a particular process of the five elements coming together so bhautikatvat drishyatvat okay and sagunatvat guna there is an attribute there is a guna there is a property sagunatvat therefore the mind and the sense organs are the objects of my perception who am i i am not the objects of my perception therefore i am not the mana buddhi ahankara chitta i am not the organs of perception like the five sensory organs of perception i am not the five elements which have gone to form this sukshma sharira in a particular way as told in the tatva bodha we have to go that then if i am not that if i am not the components of sukshma sharira which components the antakarana component and also the jnanendriya component of i am not drishyatvat sagunatvat and bhautikatvat i am not the mana buddhi ahankara chitta and also the five organs of perception i am not the five elements which have gone to form them then who am i i am the druk swarupa sakshi chaitanya swarupa atma chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham chit ananda swarupa i am of the nature of consciousness chit ananda swarupa i am of the nature of purnatvam purnatva swarupatma shivoham i am the most auspicious i am the highest what is called as the paramarthika satyam 
I am the one who gives existence to everything around me in the form of consciousness. Therefore, I am the most auspicious. Shivoham, Shivoham. So I am the Drikswarupa Atma. I am not the Drishya Swarupa Sukshma Sharira. I am not the Sukshma Sharira. Aham, Naham, I am not that. So I have to do contemplation on this again and again and again to understand that I am not the Sukshma Sharira. Here he has started with Sukshma Sharira. But then we have to start from the main body itself. When there is disease in the body, when there is discomfort in the body, how I get entangled and I say I am sick. I am not sick. The body is sick. Correct? All the attributes or the properties of the body belong to the body. The tallness, the shortness, the thinness, the fatness, the disease, health, all that belongs to the body. It does not belong to me. But what do I say? I am tall. I am thin. I am this. I am that. All these things. I am beautiful. I am ugly. I am dark. I am fair. I am sick. All this belongs to the body. All these attributes and properties belong to the body. They don't belong to me. Body is drishyam. It is pancha bhautikam, five elements. All the properties and attributes belong to this body and not to me. That he has not very clearly mentioned here. But in the next verse, we get a glimpse of the <coughs> sthula sharira that is being mentioned there. So the drip drishya viveka three Principles of Drishya Drish, Viveka are here applied in negating I am not the mind and the sense organs. Mind and the organs of perception. Next we will see the second verse. Na chapra na sanyo na vai pancha vayuhu na vasapta dhatur na vapancha koshaha so what does he say here? Next he comes to the next organ of Sukshma Sharira. Pranaha. Pranaha. Nacha prana sanyo. That means I am not the group of pranas. I am not the prana. Why? Prana is also drishyam. Drishyatva. I can feel my prana going in and coming out. Correct? I can feel my digestion. I can say today my digestion is manda. I don't want to eat anything. Today my digestion has gone for a toss. Therefore, I have to be careful about my food. Correct? So, when I am not able to breathe in and breathe out properly, then also I am aware of it. When I am sick and my prana weakness, my prana is weak, I am aware of it. So, nacha prana sanyo. The prana aspect of the sukshma sharira also is the drishyam. It is an object of my perception. Therefore, I am not the prana. Nacha prana sanyo. Navai panchava yuhu. I am not the physiological prana also. I am not the physiological prana also. What are the five types of pranas? Pancha vayu. Vayu vikara which has given rise to the pancha pranas. What is that? That is prana, apana, vyana, samana, udana. What we can call as the physiology. Not just the anatomy but the physiological pranas. The prana is the physiology of the being. So this prana modifies itself into various types of physiological function which are called as the pancha pranas. I am not the digestive prana. Why? Because I am aware of my digestion. I am not the prana, apana, udana, samana. I am not any of these pancha pranas because I am aware of the condition of the functioning of my physiological pranas. Breathing I am aware of. Difficulty in breathing I am aware of. Change in the breathing I am aware of. I am even able to consciously bring about changes in my breathing. I am aware when something goes wrong with my digestive prana. 
and something goes wrong with my apana prana, the excretory prana, I'm very much aware of it. There is no problem at all in knowing about it. Maybe you can say circulatory prana, I may not, that, that is okay. But various pancha pranas, they are the objects of my perception. They are the objects of my perception. Therefore, I cannot be the prana. The prana is an object of my perception. I am the perceiver consciousness. Therefore, I am not the prana. I am not the five types of physiological vayu vikaras also. Nava saptadhatur nava pancha koshaha. Nava saptadhatur nava pancha koshaha. I am not the saptadhatu. See, here you can say, Sthula Sharira is being talked about here. What keeps the Sthula Sharira or the physical body in its proper shape and in a proper way so that all the various components of the physical body function in a proper way? They are called as the Saptadhatus or seven kinds of tissues which we call in our lang in medical language connective tissues. There are certain tissues, tissues means cells or parts of the body, which are meant to keep all things, the whole body in its proper shape and function. And it is said that there are sapta dhatus. There are seven kind of dhatus there, which are responsible for keeping this thula sharira in a certain way functioning properly. Asti. Asti means what? The bones. Then we have got majja the bone marrow, medas, the fat, mamsaha, that is the muscles. Then we have got rasa, that is the fluids in the body, the plasma, the fluids, we call various types of fluids in the body. Raktaha, the blood, this is also a dhatu. Shukraha, you know, the fluid which is necessary for procreation. So these are the sapta dhatus. Now, Sapta dhatus are also in Ayurveda, they talk about seven elements also. And of course, minerals, minerals, our body also has minerals. Calcium is there, copper is there, zinc is there. So many elements, so many metals are also there. But basically, Sapta dhatu means these connective tissues which keep the Stula Sharira well connected for a proper functioning. So this is the only indication where we get the indication of the sthula sharira. That means nava sapta dhatuhu. I am not the sapta dhatus. I am not the seven kind of connective tissues which keep the sthula sharira in a certain way functioning properly. So an indication that I am not the sthula sharira also. Specifically, Stula Sharira has not been brought about here. But Sapta Dhatu, we can say indirectly, Bhagavan Shankaracharya is talking about the Stula Sharira. Nava Pancha Koshaha. I am not the five Koshas. If you divide the entire Anatma, you can divide it into Sharira Trayam, Stula Sharira, Sukshma Sharira, Karana Sharira, or in the language of Taitariya Upanishad, you can divide it into five layers or five koshas. Annamaya kosha, Pranamaya kosha, Manomaya kosha, Vijnanamaya kosha, Anandamaya kosha. Therefore, Nava Pancha kosha. Here also, an indication of Annamaya kosha also comes here. So we have to take indirectly by saying Pancha koshas, the Sthula Shariram or Annamaya kosha also is included in that. Then, Navakpa Nipadav Nachopastapayu. So these are the Karmendriyas. What are the Karmendriyas? The organs of action. Vak, speech. Panihi, the hands which do the work of, you know, Grahanam, holding. Then, Padav, the feet which do the action of gamanam. Upastaha payuhu. Upastaha, that is the organ of procreation. Payuhu, the organ of excretion. These are all the 
karmendriyas also a part of the sukshma sharira so the first two verses are talking about i am not the sukshma sharira so here he has dealt with bhagwan has dealt with what the antakaranam he has dealt with the five organs of perception he has dealt with the five karmendriyas he has dealt with and all the vayu vikaras prana he has dealt with therefore i am not the sukshma sharira is what is told in the six lines of the first two verses na vak pani padav na chopasta payu hu i am aware of my hands i can see my hands i am aware of my speech the speech or vak indriya is an object of my perception the hands are an object of my perception the feet are the object of my perception and the the upasta and payu indriya are the objects of my perception and whatever is the properties or all whatever vikaras there or properties are there or whatever gunas are there they belong to that particular organ it does not belong to me the attributes and the properties belong to them then they are also pancha bhautika so drishyatvat bhautikatvat sagunatvat so all the organs pancha vayus then pancha jnanendriyas pancha karmendriyas and also the chatvari antakarana this entire sukshma sharira here bhagwan says i am not applying these three principles drishyatvat bhautikatvat at the same time sagunatvat they have properties they are the objects of my perception and they are actually the karyas or products of the five bhutas pancha bhutas then who am i chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham and that chit swarupa chit means what chaitanya swarupa आनंद स्वरूप अनंत स्वरूप और पूर्णत्व स्वरूप आत्मा रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम आई एम द मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस वन बिकॉज दीज आर ऑल दैट आई सी इन दिस एंटायर सूक्ष्म शरीर इज अनात्मा जड वॉट इज अनात्मा इट इज जड बट देन दिस अनात्मा इज फंक्शनिंग एज इफ इट इज सेंशियल it is functioning as if it is sentient the stula sharira sukshma sharira together in unison are functioning as though it is sentient sometimes it is difficult for me to accept that the body mind sense complex is jada how can you say the body mind sense complex is jada it is sentient it pains me when i pinch myself and it is functioning as a unit as if it is a very very you know it is a sentient unit so what who am i i am that consciousness which gives which lends sentience to the entire sukshma sharira therefore i am auspicious shivoham shivoham i lend existence and consciousness to the entire sukshma sharira in my presence the entire sukshma sharira is able to do its activities in my sannidhi it is said in there is a work called vakya vritti sannidhi matrena yasya sannidhi matrena in the mere presence of me all the sense organs and the entire sukshma sharira and the stula sharira they work and they do their respective functions as if they are sentient as if they are sentient that is why in an upanishad called as the kenopanishad kenopanishad atma i am described as shrotrasya shrotram i am that consciousness behind the ear because of which the ear functions as a ear shrotrasya shrotram manaso manoyat i am the mind of the mind 
and that consciousness because of which the mind functions as a mind vacho ya vacham i am that consciousness because of which the you know vak indriya is able to function sentiently and properly okay so pranasya pranah i am the prana of the prana i am the consciousness behind the prana because of which the prana is functioning yasya sannidhi matrena in whose mere presence the entire sukshma sharira is made sentient sukshma sharira borrows the sentience borrows chaitanyam from atma and the sukshma sharira functions as a very very perfect sentient unit therefore who am i i am the chit swarupa ananda swarupa sat chit ananda swarupa atma the most auspicious one i am the auspicious one shivoham shivoham it is in my presence that the whole body mind sense complex becomes active like when the sun rises mere sannidhi matrena merely in the presence of the sun and sunlight the whole world gets up and comes into activity similarly by the mere presence of me in close contact with this body mind sense complex this entire body mind sense complex becomes sentient and is able to <coughs> get into its action which is it is supposed to do so with this the sukshma sharira details and just a mention of i am not the stula sharira has been dealt with in these two verses in the next two verses bhagwan is going to talk about the properties the gunas or the attributes which belong to this sukshma sharira and stula sharira which i am not the second thing he is going to say the attributes or the properties that i observe are not mine they don't belong to me the atma they belong to the sukshma sharira they belong to the sukshma stula sharira he is giving more stress on sukshma sharira here he is not giving too much of stress on stula sharira because we have already studied that in tattva bodha in atma bodha and in other words so here he is talking about these things in the next two three verses so we will take the third verse third fourth fifth sixth we will take up in the next session which we should be able to do it quite faster than today because today i wanted to give the basic you know that teaching behind this atma shatkam that we are taking and also the next stotra that we will be taking so i thought i should explain in detail you know what are the principles of dritrishya viveka before going into it nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushakah avastha shambhavi mestu prasannostu gurustada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukham apnuyat ओम शांति शांति शांति